Today we will talk about a histogram, what it is, how to use it, and why it's important for you as a photographer and of course as a retoucher to understand it and what are the benefits of using it. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another fun episode. Yes, today's topic is histogram, so let's start by explaining it, what it is. Histogram is a graphical representation of tonal values on your photo. So it will show you the amount of tones of particular brightness found in your photo all the way from blacks to whites or from 0 to 255 or from 0% to 100% brightness, however you want to look at it. And having histogram is really good because histogram will show you if your image is properly exposed or it's overexposed or underexposed. So it will show you if you have some highlights or shadows clipping. So what's the clipping part here? Clipping means that you're losing some details in highlights or shadows and you cannot recover them later in post-production. If you're shooting raw, you can recover some of them, but sometimes you cannot recover all of them, depends on the situation. So it's really good to know while you're still on set and you can repeat the shot if you overexpose it a lot or underexpose it a lot so you cannot recover that layer. Sometimes, of course, you want to overexpose or underexpose shot just a little bit. Depends what kind of dynamic range you want to capture, but that's another topic. We'll talk about that in some other tutorial. But it's good to know, but just looking at the back of your camera to see if your photo is good to go for later retouching in post-production or if you don't want to retouch it at all it's good to know what kind of exposure you have here so sometimes for example if you're shooting in really bright conditions sun sun it's really bright and you're looking at the back of your camera and you cannot be sure if the photo is properly exposed by but by just looking at a histogram you can be sure what kind of tonal values did you capture with that shot so you can be sure that photo is properly exposed. So now let me show you in a practical example how this works. Right guys, as you can see, we are in really zoomed version of Lightroom and this is a histogram right here and it's related to this photo on the left. And basically here we have two versions of histogram. We have luminosity one, this is a gray one and we have color histogram with RGB colors and CMYK. So it's back here behind the, the gray one. But now I will just go with luminosity value of histogram. So we'll make this photo black and white for just for this example. So histogram has basically two axes. It has vertical and horizontal. This horizontal one represents the value from black to whites or from zero to 255 or from zero to 100% brightness, however you want to look it. And the vertical one are showing the amount of tones of that particular brightness uh, in the photo. So this is what the histogram will show you. And histogram is basically divided in several parts. So all the way to the left are blacks, then we have shadows, then we have mid-tones here, then we have highlights and whites. So the clipping part that I mentioned in the beginning would be if you move the histogram to the right all the way. So the histogram will touch the right edge of the photo. You can see this here. This is the clipped part of the histogram. So we are losing some information in the highlights. And here on the left clipping part would be when histogram start to touching the left edge here and we are losing some informations in the shadows. So this is just a brief info for you to see what is the histogram actually. So now let me show you that in a camera. Okay, you're now looking at the back of my camera and this is the frame and this small thing here is histogram. So unfortunately on my camera, histogram is tiny and I can show a little bit bigger, but this way. So as you can see, histogram is showing us that we have a lot of mid-tones in the photo. So we don't have like too much highlights or too much shadows. So as you can see this part, represents highlights, this part here represents shadows. So we don't have much highlights or shadows and our photo is not either overexposed or underexposed. So let's go back to the photo. As you can see, this is really nicely exposed shot. So if we are going to overexpose it a little bit, you will see that our histogram will start to moving to the right. And you can see some parts here 
are getting black, that means that we have clipping there. That means that those parts are losing uh, information, so we will not have information in those parts of the image. And if we look at the histogram now like this, you will see that we have some white clipping here. So this is the clipping part, we are losing information in highlights. So this is where the histogram will help you. If you, for example, don't have zebras or this kind of uh, warning that you're clipping something and you're shooting in really bright conditions, you're maybe will maybe not be sure that your photo is too overexposed. Or if we underexpose it, you will see the histogram is going to the left and we are still good, but now this is too much. So as you can see, I will go right here and now you will see we have a lot of clipping right here and we are losing some of the details in the shadows. So let's go back to the computer and let me show you in Photoshop a little bit better all that. All right guys, we are here in Photoshop and we will use this image to illustrate this example. So let's go to histogram right here. Let's move it here so you can see both me and the histogram. Okay, so as you can see here, we don't have any black clippings or white clippings, so we don't have any highlights or shadows blown out. So we have all information on this photo maintained and we can play with that. This photo is properly exposed, but it doesn't look so. Why? Because we have a lot of dark areas right here. And this is because this scene is really tricky to shot in this time of the day because we have really bright sky and we have some really dark shadows right here and camera cannot capture both in the same time like our eyes can see because camera doesn't have such wide dynamic range. So you need to balance it, you need to make proper expose to prepare image for later retouching in Photoshop Lightroom or any other software that you want to use. So as you can see here we have all the details, a lot of details, a lot of details in the shadows. So a lot of details on this image are in the shadows. Midtones has smaller amount of details, less amount of details actually, and a little bit more about uh, details in the bright midtones and highlights, and that's it. We don't have anything blown out. So now we can go, for example, let's make a copy of this. We can go in camera row and open those shadows by just moving shadow slider up. So now we are seeing something similar like our eyes would see there in 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 uh, the spot so we can play with things we can bring down some highlights more if we want etc so we can do and go and retouch this this is not tutorial about retouching but i just want to illustrate you that you can open those shadows because you're preserving all the details there so let's cancel it and let me show you how the histogram would look if i overexpose this photo a little bit actually i have same scene but from different angle and this is a little bit overexposed. I exposed it for the shadows just to check the details there and this is just a test shot. It's not good at all as you can see but it's perfect for this example. You see how the histogram looks. Now the histogram tell us that we have a lot of information in the highlights, some in the midtones and shadows are not so populated with uh, the information. So we have just some informations in the shadows. But highlights, as you can see, are the main parts of our image. And that's here we can see in histogram the highlights are going all the way up. So that means there are a lot of highlights there. But we have some really small tiny spike right here and that, that's all the way to the edge of histogram and that means that we have some blown away highlights. We have clipping here so we lost some informations in the highlights. We have completely white, white parts there. So how can we see where those parts are? In camera, you saw that we have that blinking black warning signs. Parts of the photo are defined where the clipping is happening. In Photoshop or Lightroom, you have some other ways. In Photoshop, you have several ways. I will show you two of them. One is to use curves or levels, whatever you want. So I will use curves just for this example. Let's move this photo a little bit here and go right here and say show clipping for black white points. So if this is unchecked, you can check it. And now while you're holding the highlights part or shadow part, you will see. Now while I'm holding everything what is white or bright is clipped. So if I'm moving to the left, I will clip more and more. 
parts of the photo and for blacks everything what is becoming black means that I'm losing information in black so the blacks are cut out for our from our photo so you can see this in histogram too so you can see those parts left from this slider is cut out so everything what is right from the slider it will be shown in the image and you can see right here let's re reload this so you can see that we have big spike here so that means that a lot of blacks are cut out we are losing information there and this histogram is changing the shape so it's becoming the shape from this to this if I move this to the left you can see how the histogram changes now it's the same like this so we are with this slider we are cutting out parts of the information of the photo so you can see let's reload it we are cut it out so it's only from here to here this is what we are seeing in our live preview okay you just saw how the histogram can help you can let you know if your photo is overexposed or underexposed and if you have some clipping there if you're losing some details both in highlights or shadows right now that we cover that let me address one issue there are a few photographers that like to think that there is such thing as ideal histogram and by that they mean the histogram that will have a lot of information in the midtones some of them in the highlights and shadows and of course no clipping and that kind of histogram will look like a mountain shape something like that and they like to evaluate their exposure based on histogram so if your histogram is leaning to the right towards the highlights like here if it leanings to the right that means that your photo is overexposed obviously and if it's leaning to the left to the shadows that means that the photo is underexposed so fortunately there are no many photographers that like to think like that but I'm telling you just in case you stumble upon on that because there is no such thing as ideal histogram because histogram is not making your photo your photo is making histogram histogram is there to just to let you know what kind of information your photo contains so do you have clipping or not do you have more highlights or more shadows or more more midtones etc there is no such thing as ideal histogram because let me show you that on example because here let's go and this is this is a histogram you see just by looking the histogram not looking the photo you can think that this is overexposed photo because the histogram is leaning to the right a lot of highlights no shadows no midtones etc but that's because we have a big white wall and just a light bulb with uh, this bright stand here so this is ideal histogram for this photo guys so that's why there is no such thing as ideal histogram if you go to the second photo here just by looking at the histogram we can think that this is underexposed photo but it's not it's really good exposed to this kind of situation because it's dark forest with a bright light there it's a moody photo and it's really good the good thing is that we don't have any clipping parts here so we can recover some shadows if we want that later so the histogram that i show you till now is the luminosity histogram it will show you only the luminosity values of your photo but there is a color histogram too so let me show you that really quickly if we go from rgb to colors you will see some colors here and if we are going to camera row we have some colors too so it's the same basically color histogram will show you the same thing as luminosity histogram but just the amount of tones for each color and of course you can go and choose here the channels to show you how the red is spread to the image so there are not much reds in the highlights there are a lot of reds in the shadows so blues a lot of blues in the highlights of course and a lot of blues in the shadows a little bit less in the midtones and greens greens a lot of greens in the highlights not so many in uh, in the shadows sorry not so many in the highlights so it is really useful to see how the colors are spread through the image or if the certain color is clipped or not and of course it can help you to see what color is brighter or darker there and it can help you to decide about white balance but that's another topic it's a little bit more complex for today's episode is important for you to understand what a histogram is how to use it and what are the benefits so basically one more time histogram is a graphical representation of tonal values of your image and it will show you how many highlights midtones and shadows you have there or if you have some clippings are you losing some informations from highlights or shadows 
so reading histogram is really easy, but it takes a little bit of experience and practice. So grab your cameras, go outside, take a bunch of photos and see how the histogram will behave for different photos or sit in front of a computer, go in Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, Capture One, whatever, and just analyze the histogram for several bunch of photos and you will get it. Don't miss this. Try to master the histogram because it will help you a lot, either if you're a photographer or retoucher. All right, guys, and that's it for today. I really hope that you like this content, this episode, and that you learn something new out of it. If you have any questions regarding to histogram or anything else, leave me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer them. If you like this channel and appreciate this content that I'm giving you for free, and it will always be free, you can consider to support me via my Patreon account. And even $1 per month matters a lot. It's up to you. And of course, you will get some things in return. You can check my Patreon link. It's down there in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Practice, experiment, have fun, and see you in my next fun episode. Bye-bye.